Hello and welcome to Salina Media Connection, Strictly Salina. As you'll notice, we're not in the studio today. We're going to be recording today Strictly Salina via Zoom. I'm Brenda Gutierrez with the Salina Area United Way and today we have Bob with us from the Rolling Hills Zoo. Welcome Bob and thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's great to be here. Yeah, so you're at your office, is that correct, out at the zoo? That is correct. It's in my office, right, where I like to hide. Ah, beautiful photo behind you. We might have to get back to that later if we have extra time. Okay. Uh, usually we record in the studio, and today I'm borrowing uh, one of the, the cameras to do our Zoom recording. So we're going to jump right in. Um, so Bob, tell us a little bit about what, what's your why and what your organization does. Well, um, the quick answer is why not? You know, I mean, that's the key. Uh, the why here at the zoo is basically is to, to bring people close, as close as possible to living animals, uh, what have you. If we've learned anything through the COVID pandemic that we've been living through is, yes, we can link like you and I are doing right now on Zoom. We can have a meaningful, meaningful discussion and everything like that. But it's when it's one-on-one -on -one in person that really lasts, that really matters. And that's what we do at the zoo. We bring animals in close juxtaposition with people so that they can enjoy them. Now tell us about the zoo. For folks that haven't been there before, um, the rolling terrain, the beautiful landscaping, the specific habitats that you folks have developed out there. Well, the new is actually not new, it's old. <laughs> um, and the reason I say that is, is that the Rolling Hill Zoo is new. It's only 20, 20 some years old. The, the key here is that it's an old style. It's in the style of the original zoos, which were referred to as zoological parks. So it's a place to stroll, to move from exhibit to exhibit, to enjoy yourself, to enjoy your family or the people that have come with you. And it's essentially, it's a very detoxifying, decompressing kind of experience. You know, you just, you kind of go, ah, and you have a park-like setting to walk through and enjoy. There's no place to go. You don't have to stand in line. You don't have to fight this. You don't have to fight that. Get on the tram, get on the bus, all that stuff like that. It's just very relaxed and very nice. It harkens back to what the original zoos were a hundred years ago. So when you think about that, you mentioned um, getting out and enjoying. That helps folks who think about mental health, physical health, the natural environments. Um, so why is that important to you and to the animals? you know, that, that interaction with the people. Tell us a little bit more about why that's important. Well, for most everybody, that's a very personal reaction. Uh, some people come out and they can just enjoy the beauty of the landscape. They can enjoy the beauty of the animals or whatever, but there, there's no pressure. You don't have to get to the next exhibit. You don't have to get to the next ride. This is not a theme park situation. And many of our larger zoos across the country have become in essence theme parks. And so this is to get back to the original concept, which allows you to kind of let things go, leave the work behind, leave the housework behind, uh, and what have you, and enjoy yourself uh, in a very non-threatening, very safe situation. What, you're starting to say? No, I, no. Okay, excuse me. Uh, so when you think about what's happening there, um, one of our questions that we've discussed on previous shows for Strictly Salina is uh, biggest obstacles. How and, uh, and what's in place when you think about social distancing and COVID-19? How would a person um, prepare to come to visit the zoo? Okay, well, there's, there's two aspects to that. The first one is <clears throat> the biggest obstacle is knowing we're here. You know, one of the things I get from my uh, zoo colleagues who come and visit, it's like, what is this place doing here? You know, it's on the way to somewhere off of I-70 and what have you, but it is just a phenomenal facility right almost smack dab in the middle of the country. Now with COVID-19, it's going to be even harder to get the people off of I-70 to get tourists to come and stuff like that. So we're concentrating on providing a very safe environment for our local visitors and our members to come here and enjoy the park the way they like it. Tell us a little bit more about members. What's, what's that opportunity? Oh, well, we have, as is typical with most zoos uh, across the country, we have a membership program. Uh, for a certain fee, you can uh, become a member 
part of your money goes to the operation, part of it goes to conservation, part of it goes to other things, and you have unlimited visitation throughout the entire year. You can do it for an individual, a couple, a family, a family plus a nanny, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of variations to it. And we have about 1,500 memberships, which covers about 3,000 people when all is said and done. Well, actually more than 3,000 people. Uh -huh. Now, when you think about the zoo, what's, what's the footprint? Acres? How many acres? What's the opportunity there for it's about folks? 65, it's about 65 acres, 65 acres. Uh, et cetera. Uh, we have a, a zoo, an outdoor zoo proper, uh, and uh, basically it, it's, it's just an open place where people can amble and walk around at leisure. Then um, just south of me, we have a uh, wildlife history museum, which is probably one of the best uh, mounted uh, set of animals that I've ever seen anywhere because there's no barriers between you and the, uh, and the actual animals. And it's very, very enjoyable. Unfortunately, we can't have that open right now because of COVID-19, it would just be impossible to keep that facility clean. Uh, so that's, that's closed at the moment right now, but that is a phenomenal part of the visit here. Once well, we a, fully yeah, reopen. A great opportunity for folks, um, say June or July, as things warm up and it's able to open mm -hmm. again. Folks that like the indoors, you know, it does get hot in Kansas and if they, they enjoy something that's indoors and, and some of your special activities that you've had there. Some of well, we have, um, we're, we're not having a lot right now because we're like the rest of the state, we're slowly opening, uh -huh. uh, what have you. But typically throughout the year, we have a lot of public events. We have a zoo brew, we have a back to school uh, blast. Uh, we have a, a car show, which unfortunately we had to cancel this year, uh, et cetera. There's a lot of events that people can go out. Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, et cetera. Uh, we also have a conference center where people can come, schedule meetings schedule wedding receptions, uh, things like that come out and they can also enjoy the zoo as part of that experience, uh, et cetera. Uh, but basically it's just a nice, pleasant place to come. And um, <clears throat> we're looking forward to a, a good opening, reopening this weekend. Uh, we've had something like 26,000 uh, queries about when are you going to reopen? Uh, and it was not the same person. That's good. <laughs> Lots of people wanna know. Yeah, oh, yeah, they want to know, so they're getting ready to come. Yeah, well, I understand you've had some, um, is it recognition that you've been working on that you'd like to uh, share some information about? We're, we're in the process. We were going to go uh, for our uh, Association of Zoos and Aquariums accreditation this year. That got delayed for a year again because of the pandemic. So we'll be doing that next year. But we are uh, one of 234, 235 zoos and aquariums across the country that are an accredited member of this institution. It takes a huge stack of materials and inspection and all kinds of things to get accreditation, but it is basically the gold standard of any zoo or aquarium if people wanna uh, see it. If you see the AZA logo out front, you can be guaranteed that it's a good worthwhile experience and one facility that takes care of the animals that are in their care, uh, which is the most important thing about accreditation. Something well, that's we're very good. Proud of. Wow, congratulations on having that achievement and that level of recognition to work towards that. Um, mm -hmm. That'll be, you know, it sounds like one more way, a shout out of people knowing who you are and where you are out there. Um, when you think about as the state of Kansas reopens and how could people get involved? I'm thinking of volunteers. Do you, do you have some volunteer needs that may be coming uh, up later as things open up? Yeah, we have several uh, volunteer programs. We have people that can come out and uh, volunteer everything from uh, preparing uh, food for the animals to stuffing envelopes and whatever. Those are all kind of in abeyance right now, but we will accept uh, uh, applicants, uh, et cetera. We also have a zoo teen program for zoo teens that can come out over several seasons. They learn how to interact with the public. They learn how to uh, manage situations inside the zoo. They interpret from what are called biofac carts uh, and talk about the exhibits, talk about the animals, uh, et cetera. Uh, so there's, there's other ways that, that people can come out and be involved. How about an interesting story? Do you have for firsthand from one of your visitors, something you'd like to share? When people come, a little nugget to share what they might see, a story someone shared with you about their experience? Well, somebody once asked me, you know, why do you have so many different animals? You, you don't need all those. You just need a couple here and a couple there and people would be very, very happy. Well, 
not everybody likes lions, tigers, or bears. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Not everybody likes each one of those. And there's, each person is drawn to a particular group or a particular animal. And it's finding that little niche. And uh, recently, sometime last year, we had uh, an intern, I think it was, somebody who just didn't seem to be interested in, in animals until he latched on to tarantulas. Oh, tarantulas. Tarantulas, you know, okay. okay. And so the, the key here is once he got involved with that, once he got involved in reading about them and learning more about them and then coming out here and, and what have you, then he got very excited, what have you. And so people have to come out and they have to find the animal that intrigues them the most. It's easy to, well, it's not. Uh, I was gonna say it's easy to hug a tiger, but it really isn't, well, <laughs> you know, that kind of have thing. You hugged a tiger? You know, pardon? <laughs> no, you? never done it. Well, I've, I've hugged one tiger, but they were anesthetized. Oh, so anyway. <laughs> Uh, the, the key here is to find that animal, find that beastie out there that you like, uh -huh. that you're intrigued by. And pretty soon you'll be learning more about other animals and things. And most of all, what's most important is how everything is connected. Yeah. And how did you get interested in zoos? I'm what, sorry? How did you get interested in zoos? <laughs> well, that's a bit of a long story. Um, I was going to college majoring in criminology. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, my father uh, was the industrial sales manager for the local power company. He got a memo about a company called SeaWorld being, building an oceanarium near us. I applied for a job in the animal care area for the fun of it. Got it. It got in my blood. And that was in 1970. So it's never gotten out of my blood. It's, this is a profession that once it gets inside you, you can't let it go. You really can't let it go. It's too much fun. When you think about your learning since then, the ocean and the water and the, and the land, a favorite mm -hmm. zoo, a favorite geography that you have enjoyed the most for your years of working in this career? Oh, this is the interview question I hate the most. <laughs> Lots of favorites. Favorite, what's your favorite XYZ? I, I don't have favorites. No favorites? <laughs> I really don't have favorites. I love just about everything. I love all the, all the climates, all the geographies, et cetera, uh, that kind of thing. I love everything from octopus to penguins to killer whales, uh, et cetera. They're all intriguing. They're all uh, a lot of fun. Uh, the ones that I really, really have never taken care of and would like to are badgers and wolverines. I don't know why, but that's just kind of their nature, I guess, and what have you. But I'm really no longer in the business because of the animals. I'm in the business because of the people who take care of the animals. Uh, somebody else asked me, what do you do for a living? And I said, well, it's my job to find the people who can take care of the animals and take care of the visitors, go out and find the resources for them to do that, do their job well, and then stay the heck out of the way. Let them stand back and do what they do best, uh, et cetera. That's principally what I do now. And if, you, if I have to say I have a favorite, that part of the job is my favorite right now. Sounds like it's a good fit. Good fit. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers on Strictly Salina today? We open on Friday. Everybody's going to be welcome. Uh, just about all of the zoo is open, except for the parts where you have to go indoors or there's a door or, or something like that. Those will be closed off to uh, comply with the state requirements, uh, et cetera. We long to see everybody, uh, et cetera. So can, uh, make a trip, come out some, sometime soon. We'll be What's very exact, happy to see you. I'm sorry? The exact address where, if somebody's going to do it on Google Maps, how do they find you? 625 North Headville Road, Salina. And website, Facebook, they can follow and see what's oh, going it's on. Oh, ba it's basically it's pretty simple, www.rollinghillzoo.org. Yeah. Uh, and just uh, do a search on Facebook for Rolling Hill Zoo. We'll pop right up. That'll be great. Then people can see and know what's going on and find mm -hmm. out what, what some of the hours are and all those additional details as, as things are opening back up. Well, thank yep. you so much for joining us today. Um, well, it's my pleasure. Yes, I'm Brenda Gutierrez for Strictly Salina, and we're doing this by Zoom instead of in the studio. And Bob, Bob Jenkins is out at Rolling Hills Zoo, and thank you for joining us today. Okay, now I can go get a haircut. That's, oh, I hope so. Had, haven't <laughs> had one for three months. I think you look very nice. <laughs>
<laughs> one of those COVID things, but yeah. Uh, good. I'm going to have you call my wife and tell her that. That's well, I will. <laughs> Take care now. Be safe. Be good. Thanks. And be healthy. Yes. <laughs>